Thank you for the warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You, probably all well-educated, talented, creative persons. And I'm sure most of you, if not anyone, everyone, have a lot of self-confidence. And I'm, I would like to talk with you about self-confidence and those biking or walking around this very venue that don't have so much self-confidence. I think self-confidence is a condition for success in the path of life. And I know that you all can do a lot for the self-confidence of other people. Um, I'm also going to say something about clumsy waiters, about orchids. That's why I so clumsily brought those orchids. And, and I think my head, the one and only headset is not perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I start with my personal life. Because I, I met, uh, and I was really lucky, I met a lot of people who helped me to develop the self-confidence. And I give you three examples of those people and what they did for me. The first concerns a florist that comes to orchids. Um, I wanted to study medicine because my father was a family doctor, but I was eliminated by lottery in those days. I'm talking about 1974. And I uh, evaded to Brussels to study medicine. I was not so well uh, informed and learned there that uh, I could not switch during the studies and had to, li to live there for seven years, which I didn't want, so I stopped immediately. My then girlfriend, who joined me to Brussels, wanted to finish a year, so I had to work in Brussels for a whole year. And coming from a little, very little Dutch uh, town called Rijnsburg, that is well known for its uh, growing and trading in uh, of flowers, I thought of the idea to import flowers to Brussels and thus earn my living. Since, since being a kid, my youth, I was, I think, 10 when I started with that, I worked in summer holidays um, at a large firm. And the owner of this firm, he was already a bit of pension, but I could not uh, let go of the things. Um, he used my father as his family doctor, and he was attracted by the idea that I was going to export flowers to Brussels. And he helped me tremendously. How? The first time I came in Brussels, um, I had orchids and other flowers. And being 90 years old and very inexperienced, I entered in the Avenue Louise, which is quite a chic uh, place in Brussels, through the front door, and I was shouted away like a dog, because deliverers should use the delivery entrance. Until the lady, I remember her, thought my, uh, saw my orchids and she said, please come back, you, you can use the main entrance. And she looked at the flowers and she wanted to do a lot of business with me. This uh, import of flowers grew and grew and um, I must admit, I stopped only when the Belgian tax authorities thought I had a bit too much success. <laughs> um, I went back and studied law. During my studies, uh, I was active, like you are, in political and uh, uh, societal things. And I had my second luck, the second one who gave me uh, self-confidence and helped me. It was elder man Jan Schaefer. Probably some of you have heard his name. He was a wonderful... It was the time, I must tell you this, that cities were uh, uh, emptying, residents flew away because of the urban problems in the 70s. And this was a wonderful uh, elder man who really gave Amsterdam back its self-confidence. But he also gave me self-confidence. He was well known for being crystal clear and a very effective elder man. But he was also, he had a bit of bad reputation for cancelling meetings, favorably five minutes before they started, and he had to preside them. So, being his assistant for a few months, because his, his, his actual uh, assistant wanted to make a PhD thesis on some things, he was a very, very good man. Um, also, I, in my very first week, I remember it was the first day, he called me five minutes before a difficult meeting, and he cancelled his presence and said, do it. <laughs> now, I know, I knew at the time that civil servants didn't like that. Uh, thing, and they tended to withdraw their proposals to postpone it to the next time when Schaefer would be present. 
So I went in a meeting and said, no, Schaefer said we should decide. And there was a, a thing, I remember a specific thing. It was about the demolition of 500 houses for the urban renewal. And they wanted to postpone, of course, the proposal. It was rather uh, heavy. And I said, no. He said to me, go ahead. Okay, they said, but we did. And I took the decision, uh, replacing Jan Schaefer. And he defended it a few weeks later in the city council with all his energy. And the houses were demolished and it helped. I still thank him until uh, today for that uh, encouragement to go on. If necessary, just go on, do your thing. Don't be afraid. It was self-confidence he gave. My third example and last example of my personal life was um, I studied law and I became a lawyer and I had the luck of falling in the hands of a, a brilliant Dutch lawyer about at the end of his career. One of the best lawyers in the Netherlands in the field of liability and insurance law. But he was a bit too brilliant and sometimes in proceedings he wasn't patient enough to explain his arguments, which were always right, because no one knew jurisprudence and law um, as good as he did. And unexperienced judges, as silly as I, and as unexperienced as I, um, they overruled him, and we had to appeal. Now this man knew I was unexperienced and as silly as all the judges, but he knew I could explain, because John Schaefer told me to be crystal clear. And he gave me all his uh, uh, dossiers, all his files, to appeal. And it was so easy for me because all the arguments were in place and were convincing. But I, the only thing I had to do is explain it. And we, together, I say together because it was his files and his, his thoughts, we won every case. We won every case because he was the best lawyer in the country and I was just helping him a bit by explaining it. That, of course, gives a young lawyer a lot of self confidence. These examples show that you need to meet people who help you by doing something that is not necessary to do, but is very good to do. I saw those things when I came to Amsterdam as a mayor. I made this a jump of 30, 40 years. Um, and I, I don't want to be a chauvinistic mayor because what I'm now telling about Amsterdam, I'm sure you see it in every town, in every community. But I experienced the Christmas dinner in 2010, being just a few months uh, mayor of the city. And it was in a, a wonderful Ramada Renaissance Hotel for the homeless. And I noticed the waiters being a bit clumsy. And it turned out they had not so much experience. In fact, they had no experience at all, because they were members of the Rotary Club Amsterdam. <laughs> and I was told that there is a waiting list in this Rotary Club Amsterdam to be able to serve to the homeless. And then I noticed, then I got to the conclusion, they were not only serving very good food, but they were all also serving self-confidence to the homeless. And I think, personally, and I'm sure you will agree to, with me, that the homeless, especially, are worse given self-confidence, because we can all become homeless. Um, the second uh, example that I want to give to you about uh, is also Amsterdam, but it's a Rotterdam idea. And it's a wonderful idea that is now being spread over the country also. Um, it is uh, uh, educated in VA and Utrecht, but also in Amsterdam. It's called the Jarige Job Foundation. For those who don't speak Dutch, Jarige Job is the person who has his birthday and we honor him with that uh, name. But people, uh, many children from poor families, they are not in the position to be a jarige job. There's no money for a present. There's no money to give treats at the school, uh, at school in the class. And there's no money to have a party. That is very important for children to, uh, to give because then they will be uh, invited in exchange to other children's parties. So isolation is one of the big problems in this field. And this Jan van Jok Foundation had a wonderful idea of gaining funds and uh, presents from companies. Companies come there, they, pick, they, they make beautiful uh, uh, presents, and then they bring a present, they bring uh, funds uh, the, for the treats, 
and even to organize uh, a party. This is, this is, I think, so simple, and therefore it's so important that people do that. My last example is the IMC weekend school in Amsterdam. Uh, probably you heard of those initiatives, maybe you have the same initiatives. It's for children between 10 and 14 of the underprivileged area that are motivated to study. But who does in the weekends the education? Who is the teacher? It is a professional, for instance, from IBM, from IBM uh, or Delta Lloyd, who is then at Sunday there to give the children uh, information and lessons, but especially to show them that they're worth it and that they can have success like this IBM with Delta, Delta Lloyd executive. It's also a fantastic initiative. I make a jump to the Netherlands. Yeah, we try to, to, uh, to have these uh, mutual beneficial uh, things also in the relation between cities. Amsterdam wants to be a responsible capital and we have some things that other cities in shrinking areas can use, like here. Um, and there are, we have 15,000 civil servants, so it's easy for us to be of a little help. In, in here in the room, I, I met him at the coffee, is Jürgen Hockendorn, he's one of the civil servants that uh, organizes these, uh, these projects. We, for instance, can help Heerle with the organization of the Year of the Mines, which is a very important year for uh, uh, Heerle, because everyone here knows that 50 years ago, the then Minister of Economic Affairs, Jürgen Hell, clo uh, closed the mines, and that has a lot of impact uh, on uh, Limburg, and this is something you have to remember for your identity, for everything. And we can give a bit of help to the organization, because in Amsterdam, every day we have events, and uh, our marketeers are fond of helping them. The Gemeente of Sluis in Zeeland, when there are real estate prices occurred, a small town like Sluis is, is, um, is fought by project developers, to try to give all the disadvantage of the real estate prices back to the city of Slaas, who cannot, who is not responsible for this real estate prices. It's so easy for us to send our lawyers to Slaas to help them fight against these project developments. The city of Delft South, that's my last example in this field, um, Delft South is also a shrinking city. Um, we have a lot of uh, civil servants. Um, that knows about European funds, regulations, and how you must fulfill them. And one of them is, uh, has gone, is detached in uh, Delft South. And the mayor of Delft South, Emma Kroot, told me that they have received 12 million of, uh, out of Brussels funds, and they really thank this civil servant to a great extent. Here, Slaas and Delft South do a lot back for us, because it's a cooperation. It's not one way, it's, it's vice versa. Paul de Pla, who uh, was there, and Luc Sala, the then mayor of Sluis, and Emma Kroot, that I already mentioned, they said to us, you have a lot of poor children that don't even visit the center of town, and though that they have their holidays in beautiful parts of the country. And they offered us, and we are now organizing that, to organize uh, ho holidays for those children that would otherwise not have a holiday. And in this beautiful surroundings of uh, Heerle, um, it is a gift like the gift of the Jaak Joop Foundation when you can uh, celebrate your holidays here. So we are very grateful for that. I now step from the Netherlands to Europe, because also in Europe we can act alike. Um, there is a wonderful EU commissioner of Austria, it's uh, Johannes Hahn, uh, who is responsible for, for regions and cities. And the man has a beautiful idea of twinning. When I had my first <coughs> visit to Brussels, Brussels as a mayor, I drove to Brussels with uh, my, my, the back of my car was loaded with memoranda and files and all those funds that I was already talking about. And I was, I think this is not appropriate. I have the privilege of being the mayor of probably one of the richest cities in Europe and I'm not going to act there like a beggar. So I entered the room uh, with Mr. Han and I said to him, very nice to meet you. I am uh, mayor of probably one of the richest cities in uh, Europe. What can we do for each other? 
He had a bit of a heart attack because he had just had a meeting with 33 Greek mayors. Um, <laughs> but he took a, he, he, he marked the idea, he said, you can help and I can help you. And now Amsterdam is in a twinning situation with the city of Athens. And we're trying to help them in these financial difficult times to take care of the small businesses, how to survive crisis. We help them a bit with public order and drug addict problems. But they also help us because it has to be mutual. They, of course, are very experienced in preserving historical sites. And we have some, not 2,500 years old like this, but they can help us and they are very keen on helping us. But that's a nice example. And I tell you this, Mr. Hahn, remember his name, he's now developing a twinning ship between all 27 capitals in Europe as an example for every city in Europe. Um, I now come to uh, a question. I hope you agree with me that in Europe there is not much self-confidence. And that is strange. How can we recover? How can we regain self-confidence? Who can do that? My answer would be you. Because there is no reason for this lack of self-confidence. I can mention, you can, you can, you can easily add the list, uh, all the things we have achieved in, uh, uh, in Europe. Um, Bach, Beethoven, Beatles, uh, Shakespeare and Goethe and Proust. You all know the, city, the beautiful cities of Rome, of Madrid, of Paris, Amsterdam, London, and all the others. You know about the invention of Dada and Punk, uh, you, you can, here in Germany, I should mention Mercedes, but also Ferrari, Rolls Royce, all the things we have done, Picasso, Malevich, etc. Especially, of course, the invention of the steam engine, of electricity, of penicillin, but most and for all, the invention of democracy, of human rights, of the rule of law, of the constitutional state, of social, welfare state. Is there any reason to have a lack of self-confidence? I, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of reason to be self-confident and to help each other. And now I come to the theme of this wonderful meeting. Are we connected? I think we are. And of course we should be. And I think you can do a lot for all the others. Um, I think you should look for the florist the lawyer, the elder man in yourself, and try to help others like they have been helping me. And I'm sure that then you will help them to find the path to success that starts with your help. Thank you very much.